recording. So joining back to where we were uh, last week, we finished talking about opening numbers. And now in the way that a secret music, the secret recipe of a way a musical gets built, they always offer the character something called an I want song. This is where the character tells the audience exactly what it is that they're looking for so that you as the audience can enjoy watching them go down the path to achieve that result. The I Want song is an important segment of the musical because it really sets the tone for what the protagonists are, are looking to accomplish. Going way back to 1926, uh, <coughs> No No Nanette, which was revived uh, in the 1970s to great acclaim, bringing back uh, antique players from a previous time featuring Patsy Kelly uh, and Ruby Keeler. Uh, it certainly got everybody's attention. And this is one famous I Want song that I think everyone will recognize. I Want to Be Happy certainly is an I Want song, and we all know what that means. That, of course, was Ruby Keeler at the center. Uh, when she did this in 1971, she was in her mid-60s, <clears throat> and this was a big return for her, uh, certainly uh, sort of a, uh, uh, a nostalgic turn of the day. The Gershwins in 1927 in the musical OK uh, wrote another beautiful I Want song, now considered one of the great love songs of all time. Uh, it was very unique in its construction at the time um, because of the way uh, that the lyrics ran. And here you go. One of the things that was very interesting for me was... This is Michael Feinstein. ...learning about the process of how many of these songs were created. Because the creative process of writing a piece of music is very mysterious, and the inspiration can come from anywhere. I believe it's divine. I think a lot of it comes from a spiritual source. 
But the nuts and bolts of achieving the final product of a song is sometimes a very circuitous path. And accidents happen that, in ret retrospect, are very happy accidents. And an example of that is how George and Ira came to write one of the most famous ballads. In 1926, they were working on a Broadway musical called OK. It's a show that starred the great British musical theater performer Gertrude Lawrence. And they had to come up with a ballad that she could sing in a rather plaintive and small voice. And yet, this particular day, George and Ira were working on the dance number for the show. And George played a melody that went like this. That's the melody he'd come up with, and the idea was that it had this syncopation. But as he was playing it, he was distracted by his sister Frances, who asked him a question, and he slowed down. And as he slowed down, Ira's ears perked up, and he said, George, play that again slow. And he played. And that's how they came to write this song that was always particularly important to Ira, because Ira wrote these words just around the time he married his wife, Leonor. And he later confessed to me that one line in the song he wrote about himself, he may not be the man some girls think of as handsome. So this is for, for Ira and Lee. There's a saying old says that love is blind. Still we're often told, seek and ye shall find. So I'm going to seek a certain girl I've had in mind. Looking everywhere, haven't found her yet. She's the big affair I cannot forget. Only girl I ever think of with regret. I'd like to add my initial to her monogram. Tell me where is the shepherd for this? Lost land. There's a somebody I'm longing to see. I hope that she turns out to be someone who will watch over me. I'm a little lamb that's lost in the wood. I know I could always be good to one who will watch over me. Although I may not be the man some girls think of as handsome, to her heart I'll carry the key. Won't you tell her please to put on some speed? Follow my lead, oh, how I need someone to watch over me. She may be far, she may be nearby. I'm promising hereby to my heart she'll care.
such a gorgeous song, and the story told by Michael Feinstein, hearing it directly from Ira, I think One it's of the things so beautiful. Well, another I want song. Many people said Rodgers and Hammerstein never wrote them, but they did. Uh, in many a new day in Oklahoma, we learn uh, what the challenges were that were faced by Lori, the character, as she understood who her mother was and what her mother dealt with, and she wants to be different. So here's Many a New Day, sung by Barbara Cook uh, on a Bell Telephone Hour about 1957. <laughs> sort of an I Want song. The musical on the town, uh, which was created based upon a ballet, Fancy Free, uh, as created by Leonard Bernstein and Jerome Robbins, expanded into a musical with the idea of um, uh, Comden and Green. It, it really uh, changed musical theater in the sense of dance now is becoming, after Oklahoma, a very important part 
of the Broadway musical. But here is a filmed I Want song promoting the song that Gaby sings, one of the three sailors on shore leave and on the town. Okay, a quick tour of the... Well, actually, okay. hold on, let me back on one step a second. There's many different kinds of I Want songs, and each character had one. This is the taxi driver who picks up one of the sailors. This is Jesse Tyler Ferguson, and you'll know what she wants. Quick tour of the city. Then up to my place. No, no, to help find Gabe's girl. No, up to my place. But, lady, I have It's to... all settled. <laughs> Where do you want to go first? Ah, the same to you. My father told me, Chip, my boy, there'll come a time when you leave home. If you should ever hit New York, be sure to see that hippodrome. The hippodrome. Well, give me a chance, kid. I haven't got 5,000 seats, but the one I got's a uh, honey. Come up to my place. No, lady. I'd rather see the Forest Theater, huh? When I was home, I saw the place, a ladies' drama circle show. Now I am here. I want to get some tickets for Tobacco Road. Tobacco Road! Tobacco Road. Did I hear right? Did you say Tobacco Road? Go to Battery Park. Back home, I dreamt of catching fish so big I couldn't carry them. They told me that they'd have my size right here in the aquarium. Aquarium! Aquarium. Hold on, phone, Joe. Did you say aquarium? I'm still ringing. Yes, I said that! Oh. Did you stop for one? Hey! The fish have flown away. Let's go to Chambers Street. They told me I could see New York and all its spreading strength and power from the city's highest spot atop the famous Woolworth Tower. Woolworth Tower! The Woolworth Tower. Feed me, Daddy. Did you say the Woolworth Tower? I won't beat you, but I said the Woolworth Did you stop for a what? That's not the highest spot. You're just Come up to my place. Let's go to Cleopatra's Needle. Let's go to my place. Let's see Watermaker's store. Let's go to my place. Let's go to Lindy's. Go to Luke's house. Let's go to my place. Let's see Radio City and Herald Square. Let's go to my place. Rubens. Let's go to my place. 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 to think it might be fun. And this is Tony Yazbek doing a different kind of I Want song from Not To be anyone else but me I thought that it would be a pleasant surprise to wake up as a couple of other guys But now that I've found you I've changed my point of view and no, I wouldn't give a dime to be anyone else but me. What a day, fortune smiled and came my way, bringing love I never thought I'd see. I'm so lucky to be me. What a night, suddenly you came in sight Looking just the way I hoped you'd be I'm so lucky to be me I am 
I'm simply thunderstruck at the change in my luck. Knew at once I wanted you, never dreamed you'd want me to. I'm so proud you chose me from all the crowd. There's no other guy I'd rather be. I could laugh out loud. I'm so lucky to be me. What a day, fortune smiled and came my way, bringing love I never thought I'd see. I'm so lucky to be me. What a night, suddenly you came in sight, looking just the way I hoped you I don't know if you realize how complex that must have been to film, but it's just an incredible uh, music video of this great song from On the Town. Ethel Merman uh, created Annie Get Your Gun, sort of a musical biography of Annie Oakley, written by Irving Berlin with uh, Herbert and Dorothy Fields. Well, uh, it really is sort of a, an odd telling of, you know, Ethel Merman was certainly not a teenage girl, but there's a great I Oh, well, my right mother at the beginning. was frightened by a shotgun, they say. That's why I'm such a wonderful shot. I'd be out in the cactus and I'd practice all day. And now tell me what have I got? I'm quick on the trigger. With targets not much bigger than a pinpoint, I'm number one. But my score with the feller is lower than the seller. No, oh, you can't keep a man with a gun. And I'm with the pistol. I sparkle like a crystal. Yes, I shine like the morning sun. But I lose all my luster when with the bronco buster. Oh, you can't. Man with a gun, with a gun, with a gun. No, you can't get a man with a gun. <laughs> if I went to battle with someone's herd of cattle, you'd have stake when the job was done. But if I shot the herder, they'd holler bloody murder, and you can't get a hug. in the rain or the blazing sun but a man never trifles with gals who carry rifles oh you can't get a man with a gun with a gun with a gun no you can't get a man with a gun a tom dick or harry will build a house for carry when the preacher has made them one but he can't build your houses with buckshot in his trousers and you can't shoot a male in the tail like a quail oh you can't get a man with a gun
I want songs, and here's another for Manny Get Your Gun. This is Betty Hutton and Howard Keel in the movie. That's fine. <clears throat> is there uh, any special kind of girl that you like? Yeah. I like the kind that you, you see in picture magazines. Sort of dainty, dimple, rosy. The girl that I marry will have to be as soft and as pink as a nurse. So there's the leading man's I Want song, and we just heard the leading lady's I Want song just before. South Pacific was interesting because many people say there's no I Want song here, but there are the twin soliloquies. And when South Pacific was written, uh, if you'll notice this picture here, it's a little small, but it appears as if Mary Martin and Ezio Pinza are singing their hearts out together. It never happens because contractually it was written into the contract that they would not sing together. In fact, uh, in the movie, uh, the actor, Rosanna Brazzi, doesn't even sing for himself. He's dubbed. Would you like some cognac? I'd love some. Frenchman, I'm a little kid. Younger men than I, officers and doctors, probably pursue her. She could have her fit. Under I I feel skinny and jumpy. I am like a schoolgirl.
The twin soliloquies are very unique, I want song, because they're singing it within their heads, uh, and they're telling you what they think. The King and I also had its own version of I Want Songs. More moving than ever, and it was recently nominated for nine Tony Awards. The King and I follows the story of Anna, an English woman in the 1860s who has traveled to Siam to teach the many children of the king. Here's Tony nominee Kelly O'Hara as Anna, who is getting better acquainted with her new pupils. It's a very ancient saying, but a true and honest thought, that if you become a teacher by your pupils, you'll be taught. As a teacher, I've been learned. You'll forgive me if I boast. And I've now become an expert on the subject I like most. Getting to know you. Getting to know you, getting to know all about you. Getting to like you, getting to hope you like me. Getting to know you, putting it my way but nicely. You are precisely my cup of tea. <laughs> Getting to know you, getting to feel free and easy. When I am with you, getting to know what to say. Haven't you noticed? Suddenly I'm bright and breezy because of all. Wonderful Town, the second musical written with Comden and Green and Leonard Bernstein. Oh, I just noticed a typo there. It says Wonderful Town. Very interesting. Well, in any event, uh, here is an I Want song that these two young women sing about their life in New York. The right boy, no. Wouldn't matter if I did. Every time I meet one, I gum it up. I'm the world's leading expert on discouraging men. I ought to write a book about it. Girls, are you constantly bothered by the cloying attentions of the male sex? <laughs> well, here's the solution for you. Get Ruth Sherwood's new bestseller, 100 Easy Ways to Lose a Man. <laughs> Tell us the gasket, fix it two seconds flat with the body cap. <laughs>
Don't say, oh, what's the fun? This game's too hard for little me. <laughs> different sort of a satirical I Want song is written by Bernstein <coughs> with Comden and Green. <coughs> Excuse me. Damn Yankees, of course. Uh, Gwen Verdon's here on the cover. The story about a man who wanted to sell his hole to uh, have the Yankees win the pennant. Uh, Lola, <coughs> the devil, wants her to ensnare him. And this is how she tells him she's going to do it. Look, Lola, here's the tie-up. This is a mass torture deal like the Thirty Years' War. I've got thousands of Washington fans drooling under the illusion that the senators are going to win the pennant. Oh, Chief, that's awfully good. When they lose, there'll be suicides and heart attacks and apoplexy. Just like the good old days. But the key to the whole thing is this Joe Hardy. And he wants to go home to his wife. Well, don't worry, Chief. You know I'm pretty good at making men forget their wives. This is a routine case. I'll give them the standard vampire treatment. Sure, sure. Oh, there isn't a homewrecker on my staff better than you, Lola. But this fellow is stubborn. Oh, come on, Chief. You know I've got what it takes. Don't make me brag. I took the zing out of the king of Siam. I took the starch out of the sails. Of the Prince of Wales, it's no great art Getting the heart of a man on a silver platter A little brains, a little talent With an emphasis on the latter I made mincemeat out of a sweet young farmer I knocked the fight out of a knight when I pierced his armor and I bet I can upset every male in a year of data. A little brain, a little talent with an emphasis on the latter. You gotta know just what to say and how to say it. 
This may be one of the most famous I Want songs oh, of we, all. We have to keep training as rules <clears throat> and all that. You can tell me all the rules. You're, you're making things very complicated. Then be good boy. I'm, I'm trying to. And do like Lola tells you to do. Whatever Lola wants, Lola gets. And little man, little Lola wants you. Make up your mind to have no regrets. Recline yourself, resign yourself, you're through. I always get what I aim for And your heart and soul is what I came for Whatever Lola wants, Lola gets No use to fight, don't you know you can't win you're no exception to the rule. I'm irresistible, you fool. Give in. Give in. Give in. Hello, Joe. It's me. It's so far. Hold on. That's you.
Well, we all know what she wanted, that's for sure. So in any event, uh, <clears throat> The Most Happy Fella, written by Frank Lesser, almost an opera, and propelled because of the relationship as their partners, Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz, had uh, in the show, doing an I Love Lucy episode about The Most Happy Fella, uh, this is one of those I Want songs that's just uh, so clear in what the character's looking for. That's the Broadway star Laura Benanti. That's just such a beautiful song as written by Frank Lesser, who wrote Guys and Dolls, of course. My Fair Lady, uh, you know, certainly had some interesting I Want songs. Uh, one was actually an opening number, but it told you everything right at the beginning. This is Jeremy Irons in concert uh, in a production of My Fair Lady done in the, the UK oh, about 25 years ago. Look at her, a prisoner of the gutters, condemned by every syllable she utters. By right she should be taken out and hung for the cold-blooded murder of the English tongue. Ow. Ow. Heavens, what a noise. This is what the British population calls an elemental... Soho Square, dropping H's everywhere, speaking English any way they like. You, sir, did you go to school? What did you type me for, fool? No one taught him take it and tyke. Here a Yorkshireman or worse, here a Cornishman or worse. I'd rather hear a choir singing flat. Chickens cackling in a barn, just like this one. Gah. Gah. I ask you, sir, what sort of word is that? It's our and God that keep her in her place. Not her wretched clothes and dirty face. 
Why can't the English teach their children how to speak? Distinction by now should be antique. If you spoke a sheet, sir, instead of the way you do, why you might be selling flowers too. An Englishman's way of speaking absolutely classifies him. The moment he speaks, he makes some other Englishman despise him. He speaks more for English, you're regarded as a freak. Oh, why can't the English learn to set a good example to people whose English is painful to your ears? The Scotch and the Irish leave you close to tears. There even are places where English completely disappears. In America, they haven't used it for years. Why can't the English teach their children how to speak? Norwegians learn Norwegian. The Greeks are taught their Greek. In France, every Frenchman knows his language from A to Z. The French never care what they do, actually, as long as they pronounce it properly. Arabians learn Arabian with the speed of summer lightning. The Hebrews learn it backwards, which is absolutely frightening. Use proper English, you're regarded as a freak. Oh, why can't the English? Why can't the English learn to speak? Well, we all know what Henry Higgins wants, but then here's another I Want song from My Fair Lady that tells us what Eliza wants. Just looking at this program here with Rex Harris and Julie on the, the cover of it. It was presented for the first time on March 15, 1956 at the Mark Hellinger Theater in New York, produced by Herman Levin and directed by Moss Hart. That particular March 15th always is going to be an historic date in, uh, in show business. Well, actually, uh, March has always been a particularly lucky month for us. Mm -hmm. uh, both Brigadoon and My Fair Lady opened in March. You know, My Fair Lady forever will endure in stage history as one of the classics of show business. Based on George Bernard Shaw's play, Pygmalion, My Fair Lady took the theater world by storm. Overnight, a superstar was born in the person of Julie Andrews, who played the role of Eliza Doodle. <laughs> it's rather dull in town. I think I'll take me to Paris. Mm, the missus wants to open up the carcel in Capri. Mm, me doctor recommends a quiet summer by the sea. Till spring crept out the me windowsill. Someone's head resting on my knee, warm and tender as he can be. Who takes good care of me? How would it be lovely? Lovely, lovely.
The Music Man also had its I Want songs. I know some of you have seen The Music Man with me with Hugh Jackman. It certainly is a wonderful way to spend a day. But here is a great I Want song from The Music Man. Are you Mr. Dunlop? Of course, what he wants is a little scandal. Are you Mr. Dunlop? Yeah. Well, either you're closing your eyes to a situation you do not wish to acknowledge, or you are not aware of the caliber of disaster indicated by the presence of a pool table in your community. Well, you got trouble, my friend. Right here, I say trouble right here in River City. Why, sure, I'm a billiard player. Certainly mighty proud to say I'm always mighty proud to say it. I consider that the hours I spend with a cue in my hand are golden. Help me cultivate horse sense and a cool head and a keen eye. Did you ever take and try to give an ironclad leave to yourself from a three-rail billiard shot? But just as I say it takes judgment, brains, and maturity to score in a bop line game, I say that any boo can take and shove a ball in a pocket. And I call that sloth the first big step on the road to the depths of degradation. I say first medicinal wine from a teaspoon, then beer from a bottle. And the next thing you know, your son is playing for money in a pinchback suit. And listening to some big out-of-town Jasper, hearing him tell about horse race gambling. Not a wholesome trotting race, no, but a race where they set down right on the horse. Like to see some stuck-up jockey boy setting on Dan Patch? Make your blood boil, well, I should say. Now, friends, let me tell you what I mean. You got one, two, three, four, five, six pockets in a table. Pockets that mark the difference between a gentleman and a bum with a capital B, and that rhymes with P, and that stands for pool. And all week long, your River City youth will be frittering away. I say, your young men will be frittering. Frittering away there noontime, supper time, chore time, too. Get the ball in the pocket. Never mind getting dandelions pulled to the screen door patch to the beefsteak pounded. Never mind pumping any water till your parents are caught with a cistern empty on a Saturday night, and that's trouble. Yes, you got lots and lots of trouble. I'm thinking of the kids in the knickerbocker, shirt tail young ones, peeking in the pool hall window after school. You got trouble, folks, right here in River City. Trouble with a capital T, and that rhymes with P, and that stands for pool. Now, I know all you folks are the right kind of parents. I'm going to be perfectly frank. Would you like to know what kind of conversation goes on while they're loafing around that hall? They were trying out Bevo, trying out Cubabs, trying out tailor-maids like cigarette fiends, and bragging all about how they're going to cover up a telltale breath with sense. And one fine night, they leave the pool hall, heading for the dance at the armory. Libertine men and scarlet women and ragtime, shameless music that'll grab your son, your daughter, with the arms of a jungle, animal instinct, masteria. Friends, the idle brain is the devil's playground. Trouble! Oh, yes, oh. Right here in River City, City. with a capital T, and that rhymes with P, and that stands for pool. pool. We've surely got trouble. trouble. Right here in River City, got to figure out a way to keep the young ones moral after school. Mothers of River City, heed that warning before it's too late. Watch for the telltale signs of corruption. The minute your son leaves the house, does he rebuckle his knickerbockers below the knee? Is there a nicotine stain on his index finger? A dime novel hidden in the corn crib? Is he starting to memorize jokes from Captain Billy's whiz bang? Are certain words creeping into his conversation? Words like, like swell. <laughs> Aha, and so's your old man. <laughs> but if so, my friends, we got trouble. Oh, yeah. City. City with a capital T and that rhymes with P and that stands for pool. pool. We surely got trouble. We surely got trouble. Right here in River City. Right here. Remember the main Plymouth Rock and the Golden Rule. Oh, oh, we got trouble. We're in terrible, terrible trouble. That game with the 15 numbered balls is the devil's tool. Devil's tool. Oh, yes, we got trouble, trouble, trouble. Oh, yes, we got trouble. Big, 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 big trouble. With a T. With a capital T. And a rhyme with P. That rhymes with P. Well, that's a great place to stop uh, with our I Want songs today. So I hope you enjoyed, and uh, I'll see you regularly next week live and in person. Take care, everybody.